We invite you to stand as you are able and join your voices in singing How Firm a Foundation, hymn number 637. Good morning, and we're so glad for you to be here and join us in our worship today, this ninth Sunday of Pentecost. We continue in our bulletin with the opening acclamation and prayer. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsity.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our rock and refuge, keep us safe in your care and strengthen us with your grace that we may pray to you faithfully and love one another boldly, following the example of Jesus, who with you and the Holy Spirit lived forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teachings of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to me to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more, bringing offerings in futile. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, pray for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Psalm 50, which we will read by whole verse. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare <clears throat> the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. Consider this well, you who forget God, lest I rend you and there be none to deliver you. Whoever <coughs> offers to me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, but to those who keep in my way will I show the salvation of God. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, 
we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that, he had, that had foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. And therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that we were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been seeking of the land that they left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. And therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 558. true to The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door to him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Please be seated. The scriptures tell us, perhaps more consistently than anything else, do not be afraid. It's what God said to Abram from the very beginning when God led him out of the forgotten and barren deserts of the Middle East to form a new people. It's what the angel Gabriel said to Mary before Jesus was even conceived. And it's what Jesus said to the disciples in this morning's gospel lesson as they head toward Jerusalem and the cross. In fact, do not be afraid is mentioned 365 times in the Bible, once for every day of the year, I'm imagining. Every morning, like so many of you, I look at various forms of news media, and fear shouts from the headlines. Fear of recession, fear of the instability of the stock market, fear of the devaluing of our life's assets, fear of the spread of war, of terrorism, and of the endless, senseless, hateful violence right here in our own country. Fear that somehow our society is decaying. Fear of a looming climate change and fear of natural and human-made disasters. Fear that there will be more flooding in Kentucky before those poor folks can even recover from the last. And none of us is immune to these legitimate fears. Fear can be an important psychological tool. Fear of an unaffordable rate increase here at Deerfield. Fear of another wave of coronavirus. Fear of monkeypox and yet unknown viruses. Fear of a return to social restrictions and the resulting isolation and loneliness. Fear of a sudden uh, cancer diagnosis. Fear of pain. Fear of dying alienated from loved ones. All of these are legitimate fears that we can't help but feel from time to time, if not day to day. Well, I've never faced a natural disaster like the flooding in Kentucky. I have lived through a couple of hurricanes, but nothing that has affected my life for more than a week but when my young family and I first moved to the Central American country of Belize, on the very second night that we were there, we suddenly heard in the middle of the night the voice of our neighbor shouting, 
Father, come out. Father, come out. There's a fire. And sure enough, when we looked out the windows, there was a fire right next door at the abandoned house, very close to ours. And so we immediately jumped up and did three things. First, and most importantly, we grabbed our three-year-old daughter, Sophie. Second, I went and found our passports. And third, I also stopped and grabbed our laptop computer. And then we went out with our neighbors onto the street. It felt like about 45 minutes for what passed as a fire department to finally come and put out the fire. And in between time, I had been looking around the streets trying to figure out how this fire could have started, and I found a book of matches, which I handed to the fireman, and he looked back at me. I thought maybe fingerprints could be gotten, and he sort of gave me a look as if, what country did you think you were moving to? Well, we didn't know if this was going to happen on a regular basis. And so, of course, we were afraid. But we mustered our courage, put our faith in our neighbors and those who had sent us there, and we carried on. And it was an isolated incident. Nothing like it ever happened again. And from that day forward, our neighbors took us under their wings. Our church protected us like one of their own. And by the time we left, some four plus years later, I felt almost as Belizean as I did American. But I tell you that story to say when we are faced with a sudden crisis or these moments of crucible, if you will, what, become, what is very most important to us becomes clear quickly. And isn't that what Jesus was so desperate to communicate to the disciples in this morning's gospel lesson as they were heading toward Jerusalem and Jesus' imminent death. And yet it's also what Jesus is still communicating to us through the living word of God all these years later, to have a very clear understanding of what those things are in life that are truly most important. What are those very few things that are imperishable? What is it in life that is eternal? Or what is it that can never be taken away from us no matter what we are facing? And what would we wish to leave then for others once we have left this earth? And isn't Jesus right to the very end after all? That what matters most in life is love in all its various, glorious, and beautiful forms, the quality of our relationships, or the institutions we build, or the societies we help to create, that allow love to flourish for all people. And we should fear the loss of these important things. Freedom is fleeting. Democracy is fragile. The goodness of human nature is even more so, especially without a relationship with the living God on whom we can call and depend in our moments of most need. And yet the beauty of what Jesus is telling us in this morning's gospel lesson is that the, the treasure we value most is already right there waiting for us. Yes, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But in fact, what the Greek actually says is that the Father has already given us the kingdom or our inheritance. It is right there written into the will, written in the book of life. Therefore, what do we actually have to fear? So sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that will not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart 
will be also. Well, Parker Palmer tells us that heart comes from the Latin word core and means not merely our emotions, but the core of our very selves, that center place where all of our ways of knowing converge. Intellectual, emotional, intuitive, imaginative, experiential, relational, all those things that come together are our heart. The heart is where we integrate what we know with our minds and feel deepest in our bones, the place where our knowledge can become more fully human, he says. And core is also the root of the Latin word from which we get courage. When all that we understand of self and world comes together in that center place called heart, we are then more likely to find the courage to act with conviction and compassion. So yes, every morning, like so many of you, I listen to various forms of news media, but I make sure they are not the first voice that I hear every morning or the last voice that I hear at night because I don't want fear to begin or to end my days. No, the first voice that I hear every morning is Louis Armstrong singing What a Wonderful World because our phones now allow our alarms to be our favorite songs. Or maybe for some of you young at heart, you'll know the song by U2, It's a Beautiful Day. Or even the One Hope Project singing the worship song Arise. And then next, I listen to the voices of my dog and my cats as they beg for food, along with the birds doing the same thing outside. And then I begin to pray. But today, to end today's sermon, I want to listen to a different voice, and that is the voice of Jessica Willett, the mother of two young children who used to have a home in Jackson, Kentucky. She said, I knew things were bad as soon as I opened the door, with floodwaters fast and strong enough to move houses. Willett realized that she wouldn't be able to walk through the current with her two young children in the middle of the night. She said it swept us off the foundations, swept us about a hundred feet down the holler. I was hoping and praying that the house wouldn't rip apart, but you could hear it popping and cracking. So to keep her family together and prevent them from being washed away without her, Willett looked around her home for whatever she could use. At first, she said, I grabbed three bathrobe ties, but they weren't long enough. So I thought to myself, what is the next best thing to rope, which turned out to be the vacuum cord. So she cut it off and tied it around herself and her two children. And if she were to fail, she said, she wanted to ensure that her family's remains would stay together to the end. But in the end, she said, we were lucky that we got stuck between a tree stump and the hillside. And that's the only thing that kept us from being ripped apart. Well, that and the vacuum cord and, of course, Willett's courage and fierce love. It seems to me Willett knew exactly what was most important in life, even as she faced possible death. For us, I think it's near impossible to stay on alert at all times. In fact, just trying to or keeping up with all of the frightful things that are happening around us brings on a sort of fatigue. But we can be prepared. 
We can invest now in those things that are most valuable. Most valuable to you and most valuable to God. Because as Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where we invest our money, but not only our money, our time, and our best efforts, there our heart will follow. If our hearts truly desire the peaceable kingdom, then invest in the work of peace and reconciliation and self-sacrificial love. And the beauty of it is that we already know how powerful, how meaningful, what a treasure that kind of love is. Because we have already inherited it. It's already been given to us. We already experience it day to day. And so hopefully, with God's help, it can then ripple beyond us to include not only our families, not only our neighbors, but also our community and our world. Because when push comes to shove, when we are facing those crises and moments of crucible, it's truly God and our relationship with God and one another on which we can truly depend. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we affirm our faith together with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, and for all ministers lay and ordained throughout the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we continue to pray for all who have been impacted by the heat waves, the floods, and the recent fires. 
continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for refugees everywhere and for the countries caring for them. We continue to ask for peace and justice and healing for all communities, particularly those who are grieving over the needless loss of life. We pray for the leaders of our nations and the nations of the world. We pray for the Lambeth Conference, that it may have the wisdom to discern your will and the courage to follow it. We also remember our Deerfield family, both the staff and residents. And we especially pray today for Kit, for Cleveland, for Charles, Diana, Megan, Jenny and family, for Stephen and his family, for Carol, Carmen, Jim, Susan, Annie, Peggy, and for our residents, staff, and families who continue to deal with COVID, and for those others who are on our hearts. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We are especially grateful for the beauty of the earth and the mountains that surround us and for our lovely Deerfield home. May we grow in being faithful stewards of all the good gifts you've given us. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, and particularly for those who have died as a result of floods and other natural disasters. And we pray that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned, sinned against, against you, you, opposing our will, will and our lives. lives. We have denied our goodness, goodness in each other, in, in ourselves, and in the, the world, world you have created. We, we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through your Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Dear friend, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to always give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing.
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the supper was over, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, drink this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Giles and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your hope that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the peace of Christ, and the outpouring strength of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 473, Lift High the Cross of Christ. Amen. 